Well, first, though, I uh, thought we needed a little discuss about the different types of fluid flow, the kind of terms that you'll see in the exam. The first sort of, of pair uh, that I like to talk about is laminar versus turbulent. Those are two familiar terms. Well, laminar flow is characterized by very, very smooth streamlines around the body. There's no eddies or swirls. It's a, a very nice, uh, smooth flow. In contrast, a turbulent flow that is indeed uh, characterized by eddies and swirls. Okay? So those two terms come up a lot. The other two pair, uh, another two of the th um, three that I'm going to talk about, very important, incompressible versus compressible. Remember the um, specifications, NCES specifications, uh, big on uh, term talking about compressible. Of course, inc incompressible means the density of the fluid remains constant, and of course that's a valid uh, assumption for all liquids. Um, but it's also valid for many gases uh, at low speeds. Uh, air doesn't begin to start showing uh, uh, compressibility effects until you get like 300 miles an hour. So, you know, flow of air through your ductwork and your HVAC system is, is essentially incompressible. Uh, in order to start dealing with things incompressible, you're going to have to bring in thermo and not a low hanging fruit. And the last pair is uh, real and ideal. Uh, ideal is what you sort of study first. It's sometimes called in viscid flow, and it's where the fluid friction is neglected. Lots of problems in, where, uh, in fluids uh, where that is the case. We'll be doing those uh, first. Real flow is where, or not versus unreal flow, <laughs> real flow is where the fluid is included, and we'll be talking about that. Uh, and we're going to include that, of course, in a pipe. Uh, we're going to be looking at flow in a pipe, the Moody diagram, and all that sort of thing. Now, my take is the MEP exam, you're mostly going to be incompressible. You will have some ideal flow problems where friction is neglected, and you'll certainly have ones where uh, the real flow, uh, if not stated otherwise, it's turbulent. You may have very well have some problems. Uh, there's a result for the uh, friction factor um, where for laminar flow uh, is very important, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, now to um, determine basically essentially the difference between laminar and, and turbulent, of course we talked about incompressible and compressible, we use the most famous number in fluids, Reynolds number. Reynolds number is the density times the average velocity. Wherever you see velocity it will be the average. Only in uh, the last uh, uh, part two where we talked about uh, viscosity and we had the maximum center line, was it something anything other than average, times the diameter uh, divided by mu. And if you have the right units, uh, that will be a dimensionless uh, quantity. If you bring the rho down into the denominator, uh, you can then have kinematic viscosity uh, mu, okay? Or nu, 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 mu and nu, okay? Now, if once you've calculated that, uh, Reynolds uh, discovered that if uh, if you're less than or equal to about 2,000, Reynolds number uh, rho v. This again, the Reynolds number based on diameter of a pipe. There's a Reynolds number for everything, so uh, we're specifically talking about a pipe, um, not flow over a wing or something like that, but for pipe flow. Less than 2,000 or less, your laminar flow, and again some special things. You can see that on the Moody diagram. Between 2,000 and 4,000 is sort of transi transitional uh, flow, which is that's the formal name. To me, it's <laughs> it's a mystery. Nobody really knows what's going on there. Uh, and if it's greater than 4,000, you definitely have turbulent flow. Okay, so that's the three regimes, and they can certainly ask you a question uh, about that. Um, give you, give you uh, information. Well, let's look at what they might do here to you. Uh, they'll give you the flow rate, typically in a, in a um, U.S. system, uh, gallons per minute, or they could give you liters per minute in the SI system. They give you the pipe diameter in inches uh, or centimeters, kinematic viscosity or um, other feet squared per second. So what are you going to do? Well, what you got to do is get the velocity. They want you to th realize that you got to take that flow rate, get it in the right unit, so five gallons per per minute, converted to cubic feet per minute, divided by the area, and again, get the right units, uh, come up with feet per second. 
take that and put it into the Reynolds number uh, relationship. Uh, you should get a non-dimensional number if you've done everything proper and watched your units. Uh, in this particular example, you get 454,000. Well, for Reynolds number, we need really it to the power of 10 to go to the Moody diagram. Uh, 4.5, one decimal place is a plenty, and clearly that's way greater than 4,000, so it is turbulent. Okay. So, ought to be ready for that. That's, that's definitely low-hanging fruit is to, to d determine what uh, type of flow you have. Okay, finally getting to the continuity equation. Again, we're looking at pipe flow is the, is the main mechanical engineering uh, problem. Uh, I show a small diameter pipe going to a big diameter. Of course, it, that could be square. You could have a square pipe going to a round. It just looks round. And the key, the conservation of mass for steady flow, and you're not going to work any problem in the MEPE that's not steady, is the mass flow rate is constant. And mass flow rate is density times vo velocity times area. So in uh, equation form, m dot dot's uh, typical uh, dm dt uh, from calculus, rho VA. Okay, so that's the, the equation. And so if you wrote it down from 1 to 2, again, it could be big to small, small to big. Row 1, V1, A1 is row 2, V2, A2. That's kind of what you're going to do in both the continuity and when we get ready to do Bernoulli's equation, two points in a flow. Well, again, if it's compressible, and that's the most likely thing that we're going to have, either air at less than 300 or any liquid. So the density is constant. It cancels in the equation, and you end up with uh, the most useful formula that you can have, V1A1 is V2A2. So it's one equation. they got to give you three of the things, and, and away you go. Now, again, going to this page here, V1A1 is really a volumetric flow rate, velocity times area, and it's given the symbol Q. Of course, we use Q over in thermo, so over there we've got to use a different symbol, but uh, for fluids, Q equals VA. So essentially what you're saying is uh, the flow rate stays the same, Q1 equals Q2, and that's why it's sort of called the continuity equation, uh, because it's really on the volumetric um, uh, conservation. Okay. okay. Now, uh, got us some simplifications that you can have here and jump right to it, so let's do that. Let's suppose that you've got circular cross sections. Well, no matter what you have, uh, if you're given the, the V1 and the areas, round or otherwise, V2 is V1 times the ratio of those areas, but if they're circular, then using, uh, doesn't matter whether you use pi r squared or pi d, but typically you're given the diameter, so pi d squared over 4. Well, the pi's cancel and the 4's cancel, and you end up with d1 squared over d2 squared, or the ratio d1 over d2 squared. And so uh, from there, you can jump right to an answer. Okay, if you're going from 2 to 4 uh, diameter, then you 2, 2 squared. So you're either going up by 4 or dropping by 4, depending on whether you're going from small to big, so the flow is slowing down, or you're going big to small, the flow is speeding up. And those two are sort of obvious there. Okay. Now, looking at units in the, SI, uh, in the U.S. system, uh, flow rate, cubic feet per second, well, you get that from velocity, feet per second, times area in feet squared. Again, units, units, units. You will get an answer in cubic feet per second, which you can then convert to GPM or vice versa. And remember, the area of the circle or whatever is going to be probably given to you in inches. Um, so don't forget to convert to feet squared. Okay, Big, big, big mistake. Units, units, units. Same thing in the SI system, cubic meters per second. Well, you got meters per second times meters squared. Uh, might get CMS, although I'm not sure that's used a lot. CFS is, but CMS, cubic meters per second, uh, could be uh, then transferred to LPM, uh, liters per minute. Okay, and again, area of the circle, they'll probably give you the diameters in millimeters or centimeters, so watch that conversion, 1,000 millimeters per meter or 100 centimeters uh, per meter. Okay. Uh, not out of the woods just because it's SI. The last kind of problem, uh, of course, the, the ones we've just talked about are kind of used in conjunction with the uh, Bernoulli equation, as we're going to see later. Uh, but there is a unique problem that, that, that you might just want to be ready for. Uh, the concept of a mixing chamber where you have uh, uh, information uh, at two, two in, incoming flows, uh, rho, uh, velocity, area, you might give, be given the density and the flow rate. Uh, I, that's why I've done two, is you, no telling what you're going to be given. And 
what they're after is um, the density uh, of the mixture coming out. They may not even care about the flow rate, but uh, certainly they're going to ask you, well, if this goes in, what kind of density are you going to get out? So that's a great problem. Uh, you've really got two unknowns over here on the right, so you need two equations. You write down one mass flow rate, m1 dot plus m2 dot has got to be m3 dot. Okay, so rho V1A1 and rho 2 V2A2, add those two together, there's got to be rho V3A3. Okay, and you go, well, now what do I do about the Q? I don't know Q3. Well, you do, because not only does conservation of mass, you really got continuity. So Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. So what happens is uh, you've now got this equation in front of you. It's in your little, in your tab, in your notebook, that if you give you a mixing chamber, there's your answer. Take the density at 1 times its flow rate, the density at 2 times its flow rate, and divide by the total, which you may have to add together to get Q3, and you're done. Okay, So you've, you're already ready for this. How about that? Okay, again, as I've uh, said many times before, uh, visit my website for information about my 20-week online course, my self-paced courses, and other information.